my friends. Good to have you back again. We chatted the last time and spoke about the depth of what God is doing in the one new man. And we don't want to leave it at that. We spoke about Hagar and Abraham, Ishmael and Isaac and the same seed and who do they belong to and how do they work together. Asher, if I may come to you and talk to you about Isaiah 19. Is this a real fulfillment? Has it happened? Are we done with it? Well, first of all, I don't know if everybody understands what we're talking about in Isaiah 19. In uh, almost all of the Israelite prophets, most of the prophecies are about judgment and punishment and so on uh, for the Middle Eastern nations surrounding Israel and then also for Israel. But in Isaiah 19, there's a kind of a unique passage which speaks of a, a, a positive kind of happy ending for the relationship between Israel and Egypt and even Assyria and therefore potentially other nations of coming into a oneness, uh, reconciliation, love, faith, revival. It's all there. So that particular passage has become a, a, a banner for us, a banner of prophecy, speaking of a highway between Egypt and Israel and Assyria. And we take that to be seeing all of our nations coming into a positive destiny in the Lord and together. Uh, so, and, and uh, I see that as part of Isaiah's overall prophecies that start in Isaiah 2 of the kingdom of the Messiah's kingdom on earth from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Uh, but we come into that passage. So yeah, it's, it's a passage of hope for all of our nations. And uh, I think what's happened with, uh, with us, with, with me and with David and with, with many of these conferences is coming in and into our nations. I remember particularly our times in Egypt together in which the whole surrounding environment, historically, even politically, and even culturally, everything seems to be negative. And then coming in saying, wait a minute, could God change this? Is, is, this, is this possible what God wants? No. And beginning to realize that God has a positive destiny for Egypt, for Assyria, for Israel, and that positive destiny as a nation comes through our relationship with one another, that you can't just skip over it. And we begin to look and just think about what we call uh, reversing the curse, looking at all the bad things and saying, and turning it around to see something positive coming out of our relationships and our nations. And it's, that's very exciting to me and I think to all of us. There is that scripture that says, Egypt, my people, most of um my growing up life was, you know, get out of Egypt as fast as you can. You don't want to be part of Egypt. So what does that scripture mean, Egypt, my people, which is the Lord really taking and redeeming something here, which brings us to that highway? I think what, what Ash was talking about, uh, let me go back to Isaiah 19. Isaiah 19 is a very unique chapter because uh, it's actually most of the chapter is God judging the gods of Egypt. The, 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 the God of Israel is judging the gods of Egypt. And uh, in, every, uh, in every verse, uh, almost three quarters of the, uh, of the passage of Isaiah 19, it's about God humbling the Egyptians, bringing us on our faces before the Lord almost to the point that there is, he will strike us. But it is God's doing, because the beginning of, our, of uh, Isaiah 19, it says that the Lord is coming on a swift cloud to Egypt. It's a, it's a swift way. So he is coming to redeem, not coming to judge only, but judge, judging the gods of Egypt unto redemption. And uh, People don't understand when we talk about Egypt, Egypt in the Bible uh, as, as, a, as a statement going back to Egypt means backslidden, going back to Egypt means going back to strength of the gods of Egypt, because this was the major challenge for the God of Israel. The gods of Egypt resisted the gods of Israel all along the history, and God's redemptive gift has never been uh, released, uh, has never been God's redemptive uh, uh, story in Egypt, and we see it, God begins to, to turn the hearts of the Egyptians, 
to the point that the Egyptians will turn back to the Lord. Very interesting. He's not talking about a, a group of Egyptians. He's Egypt will turn back to the Lord. So there is a turning back of a nation to the Lord and uh, speaks about the altar and the monument and so on and so forth. But then it comes the, the link between Egypt and Assyria. And uh, then it comes the link of the Egyptians worshiping the Lord with the Assyrians, which is the two sides of the highway of Isaiah 19, the north part of Israel and the south part of Israel. And in that, the, the, it's an amazing statement that the Lord said, blessed Egypt, my people. And I think the, we have to differentiate between the people and the gods of Egypt. God hated, the God of Israel hated the gods of Egypt, but he loved the people of Egypt and the redemptive destiny of the Egyptians is about to be uh, fulfilled and unfold in the history. David, if I can just continue along this vein, the Egyptian church in which maybe many people have not been to Egypt and don't know, and we always regard it as a very, um, not a Christian nation. Is there a strong rise of the church now? Are they coming together? Are they, are they seeing this vision? More and more, uh, Egypt is uh, by large about 80, 80, uh, 87% or 85% Muslims and about 12 to 15% Christians. Uh, out of that, there is a, a small number, 90% of the 12% uh, uh, of the 15% uh, or 15 are Coptic Orthodox. Uh, the Coptic Orthodox Church started with the first century when Mark came to Egypt. So there's a lot of tradition and there is not a strong emphasis on being born again, receiving Christ as your personal savior. But the, uh, the 10, 12% of the, uh, of the uh, percentage of Christians are evangelical and charismatic and born again Christians. So there is a strong, uh, a strong Christian presence in Egypt. And in the last years, there has been a lot of freedom, a lot of freedom from fear, freedom from oppression, freedom from uh, theological boundaries and hindrances. And there is a, a nucleus, a critical mass in Egypt that are beginning to, especially the younger generation that are embracing the oneness, embracing the bridge between the denominations and the Christian uh, body, and also uh, embracing the Israel as, as, a, as a partner in the breakthrough of Isaiah 19, because as we, as we, the three of us, uh, Egypt and Assyria worshiping together, and the Israel joining in to become the third to that, uh, the, the trio of that worship, there is a blessing in the whole world, a blessing in the whole earth. It's extraordinary what is actually taking place because we don't see very much of it in our news. We only ever see the conflicts, but by the spirit, we recognize that God is really powerfully at work there. Asher, I'd like to just come to you and say to you, which nations make up Assyria? Assyria, we don't see it anymore. Well, for sure, there's a lot of uh, disagreement about that. Assyria was an ancient empire uh, at the time of ancient Israel, which was it, it's sort of in the area where Turkey is today and, and uh, parts of Iraq and so on. But one thing that's interesting to notice is if we go back to the, the family model of the Abrahamic family, that let's not forget that Abraham had three wives. First it was Sarah, then Hagar, and then Keturah. And it's from Keturah's children that then it, the uh, out came uh, Assyria. So you have that from Abraham's three wives and those three nations, Israel, Egypt, and Assyria from Sarah, Hagar, and Keturah. That's all, all connected in. And it's, it's also interesting that, that this, this idea that is sort of holding us together as kind of the Abrahamic family of faith, um, that it's been, we've been seeing this as we've been praying together as we watched over this past uh, two years, what's been called the Abrahamic Accords. 
And now, of course, it, 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 you know, when you come back, uh, if you translate that back into Hebrew, you come to Brit, which is which is covenant, and it's talking about uh, this renewal of this idea of Abrahamic covenants coming out of these nations. Now. We don't see these political treaties as the fulfillment of all those prophecies, but we did feel there was a little outward uh, encouragement to us that what we're looking to in terms of bringing reconciliation and cooperation and covenant and, and oneness between us as people groups uh, and not without doing away with one another's identities, just the opposite using one another to enforce our identities and and enhance them and bless them has been just uh, this beautiful part of the of multiplying the spiritual family. And uh, we believe it's happening quickly. I believe it is happening quickly. I just think about the, the absolute wonder of the Lord saying all the nations will be blessed. And here we are in this day and age and it's 2021 and actually we're part of that now it's it can be exciting and it can be daunting i think but i do think as well that as uh, both asha and david have been speaking one of the things that i've noticed them talking about is this laying down of our lives to really just be part of whatever it is that god wants to do David and Asher, I thank you so very much for talking to me about Isaiah 19, about laying down our lives, and I hope we can get back together again, and just we'll just catch you, and we're going to talk about the glory of the latter house being greater than the glory of the former, and see what your interpretation of that is. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.